So as you may know that the Saudi Food and Drugs Act is quite new because it was established in 2004. We know that we get all aspects related to drugs, foods, and medical devices. And the main objective of the authority is to ensure that these products are quite effective, effective safe, and uh, with the highest quality standards. So um, from this slide, we can show that the establishing the worst marketing surveillance system was among our top priority at that time. So in order to protect the public and to, to ensure the safety of the business in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Food and Drug Authority established the National Public Management and Drug Safety Center with the mission to protect the public health through uh, close monitoring of the safety and the quality of goods in Saudi Arabia and to ensure also that patients and doctors have updated information about the all safety uh, information. So we have uh, in our national health agenda certain objectives mainly can be summarized as ensuring that patients will use the safety medicines effectively and, the, and also detection of adverse reactions and early stages, detection of adverse reactions, known adverse reactions and any change in the bathroom or in frequency of these uh, adverse reactions, and also to uh, to prevent adverse reactions if possible and to promote the awareness and understanding of pharmacovigilance in South Arabia. And also to ensure that the, the, the rational use of uh, the medicines in South Arabia. We had, at, at the establishment of the center, we had a strategic plan that can be summarized as investment on the human resources. We realized that pharmacovigilance is a new cause if we haven't studied, frankly speaking, pharmacovigilance during our undergraduate studies. So we realized that we need to train our staff in all aspects related to pharmacovigilance to promote their, their, their postgraduate education. Uh, personally, I joined the uh, Saudi Food and Drug Authority in 2004, and the agency supported my MSc studies and the PhD studies. We also realized that we have to have a reporting system, both online and uh, paper-based uh, reporting forms. And we, we also realized that we need a database for uh, management and storing of adverse, uh, incoming adverse reaction from the companies and from the consumers or the doctors. And uh, we also uh, selected uh, an advisory committee, an independent advisory committee, to provide an overview of our work in the center, and also to connect large hospitals to our center, uh, to, to, have a, to find out a mechanism of it, connecting these hospitals to our centers, and to ensure that marketing organization holders have an easier uh, have a compliance with our requirement. And as I just said, that we need to enhance the awareness of reporting and the pharmacovigilance aspects in Saudi Arabia. So we realize that we need to promote the awareness for conducting workshops and advertising the media, newspaper, and participation in public events. And finally, to have a bigger basis of our guideline. Uh, there is a snapshot of the current guideline. It was a product of the committee for the, with the representative from different parts, from the hospitals, university, research centers, they reviewed the volume 9 of the European Public Commission's guideline and they tried to make sure that these guidelines, of these regulations are applicable in our region. And in our, in our regulation, in our guideline, uh, you will find some information about the rules, or all information about rules of market utilization order, all of could be qualified person for public vigilance, uh, and local and international misdemeanor reporting, and all requirements related to the BUCR, the safety sector, and the rewards. And finally, there is a part for the possible public business communication in Saudi Arabia. In 2009, we became a member of the Australian Metric Center, and uh, that time was the real kickoff of the center. We celebrated this event uh, in March 2009, and at that time, this, the center started officially for the all work. We, uh, nowadays, the, the, we have three types of uh, reporting uh, methods. The first one is the online reporting form, where you can type, uh, access our website and drop your address uh, and write it down and send it to us. And we also have the paper-based reporting form. It is a big paper, so doctors should, should not take anything. They should write out the 
all this is the information that's available to us. And we have also a lot of verbal uh, and important things such as the telephone, fax, and email. Here's a snapshot of our robotic uh, form. As you can see here from the, the, left, the right side of the screen, the first one is that there's like email support form. This is mainly directed to the doctors, healthcare professionals. And the second one is the form of quality letters. Again, most of these are reported by doctors or pharmacists. And the last one is for the public. It is written in Arabic, so it will be quite easy for even those who do not understand English to write down their findings. And this is a snapshot of our paper-based uh, reporting form. The first one is for the healthcare professional, the blue one. The green one is for the quality. And the last one for the public. As I said, it is written in Arabic. As I said, we need that. Uh, we realized that we need a database for management and storing our database. This is a snapshot of our database. It's called the American Trace. It was a comprehensive database. And uh, I will provide you with some statistics at the end of my presentation. As we joined the Uppsala Biometric Center, we have been access to the WHO database for the adverse uh, events. And we have a system for the data signal, where you can write down the drug here and the possible adverse like the action, you see the association between them. In my first, in, in my first few slides, I said that the, we need, we realize that we need uh, to promote the awareness of adverse uh, drug reaction reporting and pharmacovigilance. So we have conducted several pharmacovigilance campaigns, and we, as you can see here, that this is the, some of the posters of the, uh, these campaigns, and we accredited these. Uh, attending these workshops and presentations with three uh, CMEs hours. And after that, we held over 65 workshops across the country, attended by more than 10,000 uh, healthcare professional uh, doctors and pharmacists and clinical pharmacists. And after each uh, workshop, we could see that there is a trend of increased reporting. So we have a plan to conduct these workshops in, uh, in every one or two months different parts of Saudi Arabia. This, is, this slide shows that the numbers of workshops stratified by the region, nowadays we are focusing on some of the remote areas in the far east, far, far north and far uh, south regions uh, in order to ensure that all people or all doctors have, an active, have the same understanding of the pharmacovigilance in Saudi Arabia. And we printed a large number of educational materials. Some of these educational materials are written in Arabic and directed to the public, and others are written in, in, in quite scientific language to uh, inform the doctors and healthcare professionals about definitions of adverse, adverse reactions and how could they report to us. We have quite a unique system which is called Pharmacovigilance Coordinator. We realize that Saudi Arabia is quite a big country in terms of the area, so we have. Uh, we have the rules 60, 68 uh, coordinators in the country. In each region, we have some, uh, for example, in the west part of Saudi Arabia, we have 23 people, mostly pharmacists and doctors. Those people work as a contact point for the center. They work in their hospitals and they facilitate the reporting to the, our National Pharmacovigilance Center and acts, as I said, as a contact point. If we receive any adverse reaction report, and we need further information, we couldn't reach the doctor, so we could throw an email to that guy and say that we need certain information from the doctors. And they, this, uh, and, and, and our experience was quite successful. We meet with those people uh, roughly four times per year in each region, so we could see their feedbacks about our system, see any difficulties, any suggestions of improving our system, and not even the online uh, system. Uh, they said we have we realized that we need to staff continuous staff training and we have trained our staff in a large number of uh, they attended a large number of training courses in the discipline of pharmacology, pharmacovigilance, risk management, signal detection and medical coding. We have also nowadays uh, attempts to doing uh, to do uh, an in-house training courses in Saudi Arabia. In 2013 and 2014 and this year we Conducted three major training courses. The first one was about the AFI, the Adverse Events Forum Organization, monitoring and quality assessment in collaboration with WHO people. Three uh, experts from WHO attended this course, uh, conducted 
this course. And uh, in Saudi Arabia, I asked to have plus doors from the hospital attended this year. It was quite successful even. We have also uh, collaborated with one guy from the, one of the scientists from the FTT who was working for the FTT for several years to conduct several series of lectures in clinical and safety and effectiveness. And he conducted nowadays two, uh, is, uh, after now, two sessions of uh, evidence based medicine related uh, lectures. And we have recently also conducted a course on pharmacology and suspension in collaboration with one of the biggest uh, training uh, institutions in, in the world. As I mentioned earlier, we have an advisory committee. They work uh, to provide an independent overview of our work and to decide whether to request further information and all of our safety reviews and any, any issue raised. Those um, doctors or pharmacists, clinical pharmacists, representing several specialty cardiology, nephrology, uh, psychiatry, and so on. And they, as I said, they provide independent evaluation of our safety concerns. We, as, a, as a center, we just provide them with the materials, with the overview, with the safety reviews, and they will decide. So we don't have the authority to decide to throw the like or change sometimes the market organization that like. Uh, this slide shows the activities of this work, uh, this advisory committee. Up to now, we held 31 meetings, and the actions taken range from the legal date to uh, withdrawal of drug, uh, drug market authorization for sex and drugs. We have a tool for pharmacovigilance communication called the safety communication electric system. We encourage the doctors in Saudi Arabia and the pharmacists and all those interested in the drug safety to subscribe in our email list and we provide them with periodic updates of any issues related to drug safety in Saudi Arabia. We also have a tools for the Facebook. We have accounts for Facebook, Twitter, and we, we provide the updated information in our website just to get the people to uh, know the our activities in the center. Now we'll be giving you some reporting facts. Uh, up to now, we have almost roughly 75,000 reports, mainly adverse drug reaction, and minority will be related to, is related to medication errors and product quality. Most of these uh, reports coming from the pharma companies, and almost 3,000 of these reports coming from directly from the doctors or the public, and I will show you the exact number of slides. And this is just a slide showing that the adverse event, according to our, our uh, according to our database, most frequently the adverse events outcome is become as a result, and quite a good proportion of these adverse reaction was uh, not recovered or not resolved. And this slide shows the certification of the cases by most frequent uh, system organ uh, system organ class. And as you see, you can see that most of the awards come from, uh, related to scans, subcutaneous tissue disorder, and injury poisoning, and procedural communication. And this slide shows the certification of the reports by companies. More, as I said, most uh, vast majority of the reports come from the pharma company, and then by hospitals, doctors, nurses, and clinical pharmacists, and pharmacists and minority from the public. We are trying nowadays to improve these reports coming from the public through continuous uh, promotion or promoting our system in the Twitter uh, account of this article. And as you would expect, the, this slide shows the adverse drug reaction certified by CSS. Most of the reports are uh, serious adverse drug reaction and the minority are not serious adverse drug reactions. This slide shows the PCR evaluation. Up to now, we received almost 741 uh, PCRs from the pharma company. We reviewed more, almost half, more than half of them, and almost 60 actions were taken, taken related to the review of PCRs. So I'll be talking in my last part of my presentation about our future plans and future activities. We are uh, going to implement the good pharmacovigilance practice. As Dr. Al Sa'ad said, that the first day that we participated, uh, most of the countries that are countries participated in an effort uh, by the RDs uh, to, 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 
within it, we could follow a vigilance practice that based on the European one. Before the, this effort, we started to, do, to review the, uh, the GDB guideline through, through a silent community for reviewing the European follow vigilance uh, guideline and to make sure that these guidelines are, uh, can be uh, implemented in Saudi Arabia. We started to receive paper uh, periodic uh, benefit risk uh, reports from the companies uh, just to help them because quite frequently nowadays that the companies do not have the traditional PSUR. So we said that to the companies they might submit the uh, paper reports and we will accept them uh, as a waiver. And here is a snapshot of the Arabic guideline for uh, good follow-up vigilance practice. And as we realized from yesterday uh, and the presentation that there is a trend nowadays to, to, risk, to do the risk benefit assessment and using a structured approach. So we have a plan, hopefully within one year, to establish a, a department for risk benefit assessment and to see the, post, uh, the, 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 the best framework that applies to our situation. And also to have a pharmacopedagogy and pharmacovigilance research unit or research department in collaboration with the good universities hospitals and research centers. We know that we can't rely on the literature sometimes because it represents situation in parts of the world, as I said, in Europe, in America, and this situation might not be applicable in Saudi Arabia or in the region, the Gulf region. So we started the effort very, uh, nowadays we are trying to find the possibility of doing a collaboration with these uh, stakeholders and to establish the center in order to promote the research and any studies uh, that relate to drug safety and support and even financial. We have also the plan to do active surveillance. Uh, this step will follow the, the establishment of the pharmacology and pharmacovigilance uh, research unit because it will require uh, agreement with different stakeholders in Saudi Arabia. We have also a plan to expand the awareness programs in Saudi Arabia. Uh, we have started a collaboration with uh, medical schools nowadays. We started this uh, very recently. To, uh, we visited those uh, key persons in the College of Pharmacy, College of Medicine, in Riyadh and big cities uh, as a pilot. And we will try to, 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 to do it, to deliver several presentations, workshops in these institutions. And also, we have a plan uh, to, to discuss the possibility of making these, attending these. Uh, such as uh, mandatory for the undergraduate students. We started the collaboration with professional society, with the Saudi Pharmaceutical Society nowadays, and we have planned to do this with uh, several professional societies in Saudi Arabia. And to, as I said in my presentation, that we are also to increase, about to increase the uh, awareness programs in remote areas in Saudi Arabia in the north and in the south region. And from yesterday uh, presentation provided by Professor Stewart, we, are, we believe that we have to listen to the patient. We have to have to hear to the patient voice in terms of drug safety. So we started this uh, in a small scale as a research at this date. And we'll see the best and the possible ways of improving this experience and make it one of our assessment to hear the, to the patient especially with the, some certain drugs where the decision is quite hard for the, for the regulatory bodies. Uh, this will make sure that the patient, the, the patient are involved in our decision and the decision are not coming from the regulatory themselves. Thank you very much. <laughs>